Are we ready to get rolling? Just about. Oh, okay. So the baby coming next month, huh? Of January? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's going to come out of her body. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come out of the oven. Yeah. It's going to be well baked because you're black and she's dark too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be overcooked. Right. <laughs> well baked, but not overcooked. A lot of his kids look white? No, your kid, a lot of his family's kids and his kids. Oh. Yes. I about to say, how many he has? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Good morning, welcome to church. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. You can get involved by going to our YouTube channel uh, and Hake will get your questions and comments to me. Thank you and welcome everybody. Hi y'all. Um, Merry Christmas, Sunday after Merry Christmas. Did y'all have a good one? Everybody had a good one? Nice, okay. Um, so this is our last meeting for 2021 on a Sunday. Isn't that amazing? Before I get into it, I wanted to just hear from a couple of you what has changed, if anything, about your life from January 1 of 2020 to this day. Have you been helped? And if so, in what way? All right. And then I get into some other stuff here. Anybody want to go first? All right. Okay, I saw his hand first, and then I come. Yes. Uh, morning, Jesse. Morning. Um, uh, my ch my life is flipped straight upside down. Um, it's an amazing way. Um, I basically I went from like uh, a year ago. I, I mean, I was watching the chat. I was in the chat a lot. And um, I just made a decision just to come to church one day. And I did that for like maybe about a year. And I've had a couple, oh, well, I've had a kid. I've moved you out of state. You had a kid this year? Um, I think, so, yeah, earlier yeah, in March. Oh, OK. Uh, I moved out of state, um, doing the whole family thing out of state. Um, just things that I never thought that I would as a kid, I never thought I would have a family or stuff like that. But then, it, you know, I had a family. I got married in the Fallen State. I had a family kind of in Fallen State. And, um, Are you still married? Yeah, I'm still married. And then things just changed immensely since I started coming here. It just, it's hard to put words on it, but I mean, uh, I still work out here. Um, are you doing I, a prayer every morning, every night? Every morning, every night. Nice. Um, there was a few months ago, I missed it one day, and like everything went haywire. But that just made me uh, more focused on staying with the silent prayer every right morning, on. every night. Because nice. I, can, I can just see the value in it. It just Stay with it. changes everything. Yep. And um, so I, I'm almost every other week, I drive like 800 miles to come to work and uh, visit family out here. And I go back home and I, I just never would have been able to do uh, the things I'm doing right on. without the help of God. I mean, there's no way that I know anybody that other than truckers and stuff that like do the amount of driving or work that I do. And I, I don't even feel like I'm doing it when I am doing it. Right it's, on, just, it's just, 
we'll stay with the yeah. prayer no matter his, what. His yoke is really light. That's it's, right. Yeah. His ways are easy. Yeah. Ray, way easy. Nice. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, so last year I was worrying, like, you know, felt like, hey, maybe my mother's spirit's in me. I'm worrying about all kinds of stuff that's out of my control rather than having faith in God, knowing that he's in control. Yeah. Like, hey, what what's on the surface isn't always the truth and reality. So, yeah, there's like a lot of stuff going on in the world, but... You know, coming here, doing the silent prayer, I've like gotten peace. And right so that's how things have changed. Nice. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, last year um, I was uh, on the street and uh, things were just... You were living on the street? Yeah. Um, in Long Beach really wasn't a, a good time. It wasn't until like later on, towards like this time last year, I got on my feet and I was living somewhere. I was living there for about a year up until last month. Um, but from the start, of, the start of this year, I was in a relationship. Then about a month, month ago, I got out of the relationship. The woman was much older than me. So it was like I was kind of dating my mom. Yeah. And uh yeah, she would just mother me around. It wasn't really like much of a actual you know, relationship. It just felt she it felt like she was just babying me. Yeah. And after a while once I figured that out, and by the way, she was totally scared to come here because she knew she was going <laughs> to get out it. I I asked her, "Hey, do you want to go to Jesse's church?" She, she was like, "Yeah, we'll go." Then when Sunday came, she got cold feet. <laughs> and she didn't want to come. And Has so, she watched any of the videos? Uh, yes. Oh, I see. She has. And yeah. uh, <laughs> there's, some things, there's some things that she uh, she has some discrepancies about, but she would argue with to, she would argue about it to me. And I'm like, why, what are you telling me for? Why don't, we, why don't we go in the flesh? And you tell me yourself. And she didn't even want to do that. But anyways, yeah, that ended. And then um, one of the places that I was living in in um, L.A., uh, I found out that the owner and the property manager together was pocketing everyone's rent. So it was like we weren't even paying it because it takes, you know how long it takes to pay yeah. off a mortgage. So they sold the property. Um, they told all the tenants. The, the, first, the house manager left. He found, he found out what they were doing. He left. Some other tenants followed, and it was just me and some other people. And so once they figured that out, we all had to go. So how are you like right now? I'm living with my parents, oh, okay. and I hate it. You hate it? I don't. Like Why it. you hate it? I don't like it because one, there's when I'm there, it feels like I'm not my age. It feels like I'm ten years younger. Yeah. And are you working? Am I working? No, not right now. Okay. I'm, Why haven't you gotten a job? There's so many jobs out there now. Why haven't you gotten one? The vaccine. Oh, they're requiring you have the vaccine. Yeah. They every, tell you that. Yeah. Every job that I've looked at and I've um. I've actually interviewed for, they'll ask me that. Oh. Like, for example, I had an interview at, a, at Closet World, and they were requiring that, too. Like, they say you have to have the vaccine or to prove yeah. that you don't have it? The... You, you, you have to prove that you have it, and then you have, like, if you tell them no, then you won't get the job. It don't matter if, yeah. you, if you have experience in that place or not. They'll tell you again. But let me just say this, because I want to move forward. Don't hate your situation, though. Why not be grateful because now you understand what's going on. You know how to deal with your parents in the right way. Why hate your situation? You should be grateful you got a place to stay, find a job. You should have a good attitude about it. You're like, you, you understand now. You're not angry. You're not controlled by that, so you'll be fine. Right, yeah. So why hate it instead of being grateful? Well, it's, it's, it's because I feel as if I'm, very, I'm grateful to have a place to stay. Don't get me wrong. Right. I feel as if I'm there because I fully have not forgiven my parents yet. Because, right, so be grateful to see that. Right. So don't be angry about it. Right. Um, and I, yes, I do the silent prayer. So. Yeah. Um, and it just, like, it just <clears throat> something hit me. I, I was watching the show on, I believe it was Thursday, and something hit me. I, I felt as if I should, 
like really, really legitimately forgive them. Like I do, but I don't think I've, I've actually have, yeah. if that makes any sense. So I think that's why that I'm there. I think that's why God put me there. Right. And as soon as you see that, go and forgive and be done with it. Okay. All right. But be grateful about all things. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, yeah, um, sorry, because <laughs> I've, um, well, to me, um, last year was like when I lost the baby and when I was in fear, yeah. but I was, I was thinking right now when he was saying about his situation, he's angry, right, about his situation, I was thinking when you give your life to God, and I was talking about it too, it, it, things are not going to go amazing. It, it's not like out of nowhere you've been living such a horrible life and you give your life to God and then out of the sudden everything's peaceful and happy and no, it's going to go down so yeah. it can get built back up. And I feel like last year was that for me. Um, it's not like a horrible year. It was just like a year where I had to like die, I guess. Yeah. I remember telling you the woman's forum that I was feeling like I was disappearing. Like it was like a weird feeling of oh i'm disappearing like i don't know yeah. who i who is this and then now this year i feel more confident on on god my relationship with god right like how is it growing because of course is you what like you said it's a process you know but i feel confident how is it growing and i don't have any more resentments to my husband or and you don't overreact as much anymore you stop yeah, overreacting yeah Good. i'm not overreacting. that's so important and also like it, the perfect example was we were going to this christmas party and then there were friends that we would, did, didn't have, we didn't, we haven't hung out with them in a long time. Yeah. And they were poking, poking, poking on me mostly, because I feel like the devil always goes through the woman first. <laughs> so they were poking me with me towards like overreacting towards my husband or towards things, right? Yeah. And I didn't notice that that was a poke. I just kept replying the right way, but I didn't in that moment. I didn't notice I was doing that until the next day. I realized, oh, because we're talking about something with my husband. It's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. I didn't say, I didn't overreact or react about these poking the strategies yeah. they were doing. And I just realized it now. It's like nothing happened in that moment. That's right. And it Absolutely. was, and that was the biggest thing to me to realize, wow, like there's something happening. There's something getting better. I still have road to walk, you know, but, but it is way, way better now than Right on. Than never. Nice. Um, the two guys in the back, can you stand up for me? So I want you guys to meet Tom and Joe. This Tom is a white guy and Joe. Right? <laughs> Um, you see Tom and Joe? Everybody see Tom and Joe, right? Okay. So, <laughs> um, let me see, how should I do this? So everybody see Tom and Joe, right? <laughs> Joe is the black one in this case. Oh, okay. Okay. Tom is the white guy, all right? Um, Okay. Tom is, Tom is Dr. Tom. He has a PhD. He's Dr. Tom. And Joe is just Joe. You still see him, right? Uh, so let it soak in for a minute. What was your impression of Joe and Tom when I first introduced them? <laughs> um, well, just looking at them, they're, you know, standing upright, they're tall. I'm sorry? They're either standing upright, they're tall. Um, one of them's wearing a cool sweater. Um, and nice you, sweater. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Absolutely. Tall baby. <laughs> no, they must be here for a reason, and I'm just wondering what it is. Okay. One is a doctor, the other one is yeah. not. That's just a title to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, how do you see, what was your impression of Tom and Joe before you realized one was a doctor? 
I mean, no disrespect, I had no real impression. Uh, none. Yeah. Uh, you guys are too awake. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anybody had a different impression once I said one is a doctor? No. Oh, okay. All awake people here. You did? Why the, why the non-doctor got to be black? <laughs> <laughs> Affirmative action. <laughs> and, 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 thank you, guys. This your first time here? Oh, okay. Is this your first time? Uh, yeah, I, I just came with him. Is this your first he, time? He's a big fan of yours. So okay. He, uh, What's your name? Your first name? Uh, Matt. Matt. It's not even Tom. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming, Matt. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. And the reason I made that point is because I realized that words, both outside of us and inside of us, affect us if we're not aware of it. Words can affect us. And like, the moment someone put a title to their name, it cha- if you pay attention, it changes your image of that person. If somebody walked in the room and said, hey, my name is Joe, right? You just see him as a regular person. But if they say my name is uh, Dr. Joe or Psychology Joe, immediately you start to see them above their reg- the regular ins- insight you have. Have you ever noticed that? And if you pay attention to that, you're being manipulated by the, the world like that. The words inside of us, in the mind, and the words outside of us, in others, you can be manipulated with words. Whereas God's voice is a quiet, voiceless, wordless voice. And that's the voice that he wants us to be aware of so that we are not manipulated by words. If you really, really pay attention to yourself and get to know yourself, if you listen to the words in your head, they'll make you think you are depressed. Have you noticed that? They'll make you have fear. And a whole lot of folks got fear today. They have fear. I hardly know anyone that don't have fear. I'm sure you can find people, but most people have, they fear something. Anybody here has fear of something sometimes? Yeah, you have fear, right? And did you say yes? And why do you, what is, what is it that you fear at times? Well, um, I don't know. It's like your mind is always thinking, oh, yeah, I have to do this, I have to do this. And it makes you nervous and you get a little afraid. Personally, I, I, I just go for it, you know? Like, I, I mean, I feel the fear that yeah. it's there. Yeah. But I'm like... I gotta go for it, you know. I mean, why not? So I, but I do. I get, I, I get really nervous and scared. Is it normal to have fear? Um, I, f- I feel like it's normal. Yeah. You do. You feel like it's I, I think it's normal. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean it's. I, I don't think we're like born with it, but I feel somewhere we. It's normal uh, to have the fear. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Amazing. Mm-hmm. He had his hand first. Let me go right here and then. Yes, sir. I was going to say, in regards to that situation, um, I noticed um, what changed for me was, um, I don't know if you get, when you get burned by doctors or you get burned by so many different people, but then, but you don't, you don't see it as like, oh, oh, they screwed me over. You're just seeing like, oh, oh, wow, they're actually really stupid. Um, (laughs) You, you, you kind of, you, that's when that start, start shedding from like, you know, when someone says, oh, I'm a doctor, you're just like, man, like, I don't, you you, you, you've done so much damage that I don't even respect that word anymore. Um, yeah, you said but, it nowadays. Yeah, but but I think that's also because why God was telling us to, um, whenever you're in a trial or whatever, just have fun, not have fun with it, but but be joyful. Count it all joy, absolutely. Yeah, count it all joy, so you don't end up like that where you seeing someone say, "Oh, I'm a doctor," or "I'm this," yeah. "I'm that," and then you're just like you just completely change your mind about the situation. That's right. That, that's, what, that's the thing that I, this year, that I learned, like, Amazing. big time. Okay. You say you have fear. You have fear. And why do you have fear? Uh, I just do. Like, it could, it's from experience, from things I've experienced growing up as a child. I mean, like I said, I, I, it has to do with things that make me physically feel uncomfortable. Like being around large groups of people have always made me feel uncomfortable, just in general, from experiences of being around uh, 
crowds of people or just like going on roller coasters. I don't like roller coasters. I've always been afraid because when you, the, when you ride them, when you're on the roller coaster, the way it physically makes you feel, I don't like it. Is it normal to have fear? Uh, yes, I believe it is. Oh, okay. If you're a human being, you're going to have thoughts, you're going to have feelings, and you're going to have fear. Oh, okay. Yeah. So everybody, if, you're, if you don't have that, then that's incredible. <laughs> it's actually incredible. If you don't have fear, it's incredible? Yeah. Oh, okay. Amazing. Uh, let me take here then there. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning. Uh, I don't think it's normal to have fear. And do you have fear? No. You never have fear? Not anymore, no. And why do you say it's not normal? Uh, because I know within me that I can't control anything. So if we know we really have faith in knowing, when we know we know that you can't control anything, yeah. what are you scared about? Oh, OK. I mean, there's no other way. Just Before knowing that, did you have fear sometimes? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and and what would cause you to have fear? Uh, just whatever the world would throw at me. Uh, not anything in particular, but I realized that certain things I would be a little uneasy or, or scared to go through. Oh, OK. Um, but, once you can separate yourself from that and then see everything for what it is, uh, you really, the fear kind of goes away, uh, along with believing in God and, and you know, having your, your faith really tested at one point. Uh, going back to that whole doctor, the notion, yeah. um, what, I, what I realized was that you can, learn, you can learn something from anybody. It doesn't matter what the That's title right. is. Uh, you could be a custodian uh, that I have an interaction with the past 10 years, and he probably knows way more than me than I would ever know. Yeah. Uh, so. It, we limit ourselves again, you know, with the titles and whatever the world throws at us. Uh, so, um, I mean, without fear and having that faith, it's, I mean, that's part of, it is the best way to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I think it's abnormal to have fear because ever since I have been having babies, um, they don't have any fear. <laughs> The first man ever to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, they don't have yeah, fear. They, they uh -huh. my, my son will just, he'll crawl to the end of the bed and he'll fall off. Yeah. He doesn't care, like he's, they're, they're just totally unafraid. I have a seven-year-old daughter. She doesn't have fear, yeah. like asking questions, no fear at all. That, that's installed into you. Right you know, on. As you're traumatized growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Amber, but, you have fear? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you do. And is it normal to have fear? No, it's not normal. And why do you have it? Uh, I don't know why I have it. I guess because I still, like, I'm in my head sometimes. Yeah. But I remember when I was little, like, I was fearless. Like, I would sing you in front fearless? of... You Yeah, I would yeah. sing in front of everybody. Like, yeah. it didn't faze me. And then I remember, like, out of nowhere, I think I was like maybe 13, I started being aware of like people watching me and then I started having stage fright. But before that, I never like, I never had fear. So I remember that transition and that's why I know it's not normal, but nice. I still have it, yeah. You still have it sometimes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Anybody else with fear? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a lot of fear. Of what? Um, well, it's more paranoia because sometimes there's there's two different sides. There's one I feel as if people somebody's out to get me, or two of uh, just just losing stuff. Losing um, stuff. Yeah. Now and I and I looked it up. There's actually a direct opposite to paranoia, which is paranoia, where you feel as if people are looking out for your success. That's what I'm trying to start getting into. Yeah. You feel that people looking out to success? Yeah, that's the exact opposite of paranoia. Oh, okay. And it's not normal to have fear because God does not give you that spirit. Yeah. That's, that's from the devil. Um, he gives you joy, peace, and a sound mind. And so in knowing that, why do you still have it then? It, I still have it because it's, a, it's just a part of the day-to-day -day for me. It's like, oh, well, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? Especially like when I go to like certain events or something like that. You know, it's like, what's going to happen? Like, who am I going to run into? Am I going to run into nut jobs that are standing outside like that, protesting about nothing well, at all? I have, but if God said, I have no fear, you're a Christian, right? Yes. Sir. Oh, yeah, this is the year we brought back Christianity, huh? That's how we have a brand new theme next week. 
if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. It's been amazing bringing back Christianity. It's just been absolutely amazing. But, uh, okay, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay. I'll come back to you with that. Okay. Because yours is real serious. <laughs> no. it, right here. But, yeah, it's not serious. It just seems serious. Okay. You have fear. I do. And are you able to say what you fear at times? Uh, fear of outside interpretation. Like, my, my, my brain is, you know, telling me lies constantly. And yeah. so I think fear really is essentially a lack of faith. Like, um because I'm believing into the thoughts about blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's coming, becoming conscious, like, because usually it's unconscious that I'm, like, thinking about this and thinking about that, which generates anxiety. And you think that the fear is coming from your thinking? Yeah, the fear of, yeah, the fear of the future, fear of, the fear of what the other future? people are thinking, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. What is the future? The future is in your imagination. So it's not real? No. So why would you fear something that's not real? Habit. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just, it's some, I, you know, I've been doing the silent prayer, like, you know, and I'm not in fear when I'm doing the silent prayer. And I've realized that all thoughts essentially are feminine, like, because like they're you're giving birth to new ideas and so i see it as like your consciousness is masculine then the thoughts are feminine right and your body is like the children <laughs> that was a little uh thought i had during my my son amazing prayer. no uh, what do you got fear <laughs> <laughs> um i saw this movie last night jesus of nazareth Nazareth, right? Anybody seen that? It's a bunch of, yeah. it's a bunch of Jesus. Yeah. This is like the real one, I think. Which one? Is that the real one? What year? Well, what year? It was so good. It was everything about today in life. Nothing different. But Jesus had no fear. Did you notice that about him? He had no fear. And likewise, we can live without fear. And I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, do you have fear? You don't want to talk? He doesn't speak English very well. Oh, he doesn't speak? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Do you speak hunger? No, no. <laughs> so he by himself? Yeah, we're working on a farm. So oh, okay. Together. All right. Right here, do you have fear? Um, yes. You do have fear. Yes. And what do you fear at times? I mean, I don't really know how to pinpoint it. I, I fear like... The other guy said, like, large groups of people. Speak up a little bit. Like, large groups of people. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I guess. You, and why do you fear, do you know why you fear a large group of people? I think in general, I just fear not having, like, God with me. Because yeah. if you have God with you, you don't have fear. You don't have fear. So that's I right. think that's just the root of it. It doesn't matter where it comes from. And when you go home and you tell your husband, 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 I have fear today. I saw a bunch of illegal aliens. <laughs> what does he say? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really do that. <laughs> you don't tell him? I mean, he sees when, like, when I'm Speak afraid. Speak up a little bit. He sees when I'm afraid. Do you have fear right now of speaking? Yes. Oh, you do? Yes. What is your mind telling you going to happen right now in speaking? What does that look like looking through your mind? I don't know that I just kind of want to, like, not do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just want to be over it, right? Yeah. But do you know if you did it that way, you still have a fear? You're not going to overcome it until you face the fear? That's true, yes. Are you ready to face the fear? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Behind you, right behind you. You have fear? Well, yeah, sometimes. Not as much as before. 
And what caused you to have fear at times? When problems come, uh, financial or, or family, but... Is it, is it normal to have fear? I've learned now it's not, but it's, it's, it's been part of my whole life, I, I feel. Yeah. From, from a young child to now to... You've always had fear. Yeah, a lot of trauma, a lot of problems, so just trying to control everything yeah. is, is, the, is how I felt. I drained my whole, my, my, my energy. And does fear feel like torment or it feel good? Torment. Yeah. Like prison in yeah. my mind. Just all in my mind. Amazing. Nice. Do you believe you can live a life of no fear? I believe now. Oh, you think it's normal? No, I, I don't believe it's normal anymore. And I, when it comes now, I just, I let go. It takes a while sometimes. I'll stress about it for problems for, for a, a while, a day, but I realize I have no control. I let it go yeah. and it's, it's gone. It's literally oh, okay. gone. Even if the problem is still there, it's not even phasing me anymore. I continue my day. Right on. You have fear? Um... Not really. I mean, sometimes I get like doubtful thoughts, but I just forget about them. Oh, okay. I just move on to it. We well, need to teach your father something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good man. Uh, with the uh, yeah, you have fear. No, I don't. You never have fear. Not anymore. No. And how were you able to overcome fear? Um, just realizing that. Like nothing, I, I don't know what's gonna happen like once a decision is made. Yeah. Um, so once I realize that, and you also miss out on a lot of things when you don't just make a move. Yeah. Because you don't know if it's gonna be good, quote unquote, good or bad. Yeah. So you just, you just go with it and roll with the punches and let the chips fall where they may. Oh, okay, so you never experience fear anymore? No. Amazing. Nice. Uh, Holly, do you have fear at times? I have fear when I'm like disobeying the truth. And what do you mean by that? When I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, there is truth to obey and you are free to disobey. And so that's when I get fear. And oh, then I'm okay. just like, oh, you your bed. Hassan, you have fear at times? You look like you're pregnant. I know, I got a lot of stuff in there. Oh. But I didn't want to like unload it because then it looked like... Like, like you had the baby. Or something. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know, yeah. Oh, okay. And with all the craziness out yeah. there, I don't know. I just... So you have fear? Um, no. You never have fear? No, no longer. And how did you overcome fear? Um, well, it's kind of like what you say, perfect love casts out fear. Yeah. And... The only reason why we have fear is because we still have hatred. And it really is impossible to have anger and fear when you don't have hatred. Yeah. Um, so I think those are like the symptoms of the heart still being stoned. Yes. Um, and so just forgiving for me. And it goes back to like what I've learned this year. Yeah. Since coming here in March, I'm a completely different person. And because of your guidance back to the father and forgiving and overcoming my mother, um, I, I think that that was the, the stone to love yeah. point. And from that point, yeah, there's been no, uh, no fear. And even prior to that, I didn't have fear. I just feared having fear. You fear having fear? What Before. Mean? Oh. I always feared... That, like, if I had fear, it, it, I didn't want that. So my fear was to have fear. Oh, I see. So you were afraid of having fear? Before. If you jump into the ocean, you were afraid before you jumped? That you, no, that, I would you, jump. But you were afraid that you would be afraid after you jump? Yeah, I was like, well, what if the? I have fear, when I'm in there, that might cause some problems. Yeah. Yeah. When I was watching Jesus of Nazareth last night, he looked like you. All those folks look like you. <laughs> Have you know? I need a job. I'm like, 
<laughs> I'm like, Jesus is not black, but this is what his color is. Right. Right on. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say that I, um, I'm, I'm reflecting right now. I thought about it. And um, it's not normal to have fear. It's not it's normal. It's totally not normal. If you're not born with it, it's not normal, right? Yeah. I think the That's thoughts right. in our head makes us think that it's normal. Yeah. But, which is lies, but it's not normal to have fear. It's like absolutely not normal. All those who live in fear live in torment. You have no peace. And I realized that, remember when I was sick and I had to take off two weeks or whatever? It was the best time of my life, really. This whole year, that was the best time because I had total quiet time. I didn't want to look at no TV. I didn't want to look at anything, right? And so as a result of that, the ego had no other choice but to reveal itself. And believe me, it had a hissy fit so many days. It was talking to me in my head. It was like making me feel things. And I realized, thanks to God, that the ego, the thoughts in your mind and that pain in your chest is not you at all. It wasn't me because I had no reason to be feeling that way, right? But it wasn't me at all. And I clearly realized that I was identifying with it as me. Because when you have the thoughts and you have the pain, it feels like you. It's in the body. You feel the fear in, the, you know, in there and everything, right? And if you're not aware enough, it, it feels like it's you. And then it'll make you do something crazy to add to the problem. And say we just dump on you. While you're like fighting with whatever it is in there, he'll, he'll call his other little demons like, oh, I got him now. Come on, let's dump. And so while he's doing it, he's putting fear in you and, and making you afraid and making you want to overreact, blah, blah, blah. But you are not your ego. You're not your thoughts. And after this sickness passed and I realized that, wow, I am not that feeling and thoughts at all, right? So what I realized is that I had to stop identifying with it at all. Never identify, no matter what you may. And so you may fall into it, but you know, if you really, really know that, it's not you, it's not from God, you stop identifying with it. And so what happened is, when they do come, you're totally relaxed in it, because you know that it's not you, right? But what happens after that, the real you consciously, which is the mind of God, rise above the ego. The light comes in because if you don't fight with it or judge yourself or whatever, right? No blame anyone else. You just know that it's not you. And the reason you know it's not you because the light of the Father will shine on it. Ask for light. He will give you light. And he will separate you from that, not you. Because the ego is all evil. And it's alive and well. If you get to know yourself, you will see it's in you. It work through your mind and your feelings. It's alive and well in you and in others outside of you. And that way, when people try to harm you or come after you or whatever, you won't resent them because you see what's going on with you. It causes you to see what's going on with everybody else in the world. And the world is an evil place right now. It is evil, but it's inside of people. It's inside of people. So what happened is, when you rise above this low consciousness that make you overreact to things and make you feel like it's you, the light of God shine, and you will start to see that you're just life. That's all you are, you're life. You are not anything but life, that there is no you at all. And so you just travel the road of life, and down the road of life, you run into bumps and things like that, but it won't, it won't make you afraid because you know it's not you. Because you will see that God will uh, allow you, to, in that light, he will allow you to see that it's not you. And in the light, there is no fear it's impossible to have fear. It's impossible to doubt. It is impossible to worry because it's not there. 
None of those things exist in the light. None of those things exist at all. There's just no fear. But in the darkness of the ego, which is the mind, um, there's nothing but you can't handle any situations because the mind is working on you. Simple deals and plans cannot be worked out because you're working in the darkness of the imagination. It's, that's why God said, walk in the light. And when you walk in the light, walking in the light is simply being aware, saying present, there's no past, no future. All you really have is now. But if you believe the darkness of the mind, you will find yourself walking in the darkness, thinking that it's the light. So you got to stop having, you don't have to, but I recommend you stop having conversation with thoughts. Don't even, they'll talk back to you about the truth. Have you noticed that? You hear the truth about something and it makes so much sense. And the, and the conversation, the, the, the thought, which is all evil all the time, right? It just start having conversation with you about what you just heard. And you'll be like, oh yeah, Jesus said don't walk on water. And, and you'll be talking, yeah, that's right, don't walk on water. Don't have any conversation with it. Because you're having conversation with evil. And it's building the ego. And that ego is not you. That is a wicked spirit or spirits in some cases, more than one, that made a home in you. And because you didn't know it, you didn't see it, you haven't seen how to overcome it. But when I looked at that movie with Jesus the Christ, he had no fear. And there's nothing that he went through that we don't have to go through because the world is evil. And if you overreact to it or you believe in it, it'll get stuck in you and it'll destroy you. But if you know you're the light, you're just a living being. It'll go through you and it won't hurt you at all. But the moment you overreact, it will stick inside of you. And it will destroy you because it'll play on the mind. And little simple things that could be worked out won't be worked out. That's how the vaccine people make you take the vaccine. They make you afraid. Oh, you're going to lose your job. You're going to lose this and you're going to lose that. You can't fly. You can't get a job if you don't have the vaccine. And Satan will play on that and you'll find yourself taking the vaccine when you really don't want to. But if you had no fear because you, your consciousness is above this conscious, unconscious state, then you'll see what to do to follow what guides you. It is impossible to ever doubt, fear, or have anything. So what's so nice about that, you realize of yourself you could do nothing and you know nothing. So you like, because it's just not you, right? So you totally let go. You don't, some people are afraid of, anybody ever been afraid of losing a reputation? Like what people are gonna think of you? Yeah. Right, oh, okay, good. What's that like, Nick, to be afraid of losing a reputation, your, re your reputation? Um, because you have this, like, image of yourself. It's like when we were talking about celebrities. We, one time we were talking about celebrities and how they go out and do the paparazzi. Yeah. And they set it up so because they know how the public sees them. Yeah. It's the same thing. You have this image and you're thinking, this is how the public sees me. And you're, like, holding on to it. And so when that gets messed up in any way, you're like losing your whole world. You're losing your reality. Yeah. What is it like to lose your reputation, to be concerned about it? It's like really, it really plays on you like mentally because like for me, I'm constantly thinking like, oh, what are they thinking about me? Or like, yes. Or what did somebody tell them? And what are they like? In reality, they're not thinking that. That they're is not so deep. Anything. She thinks, well, what are they going to think about me? <laughs> what if they tell somebody? And then what would they think about me? Ain't that like deep, but so insane. And then I'm thinking too, like, if I don't hear from someone for a long time, I'm like, oh, like, they're probably like thinking something about me, even though it's like not even true. That's right. It's like, I haven't heard from them in a while. I wonder if they heard. <laughs> and now, what about my reputation, right? That's crazy the way of living. I know, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, God came, sent his son, so when we return to him, to the Father, we don't have to live that way. But we got to start living in a higher level of consciousness. You must be aware. Because in reality, you ain't got no reputation. 
Everybody talk about everybody. Really. Everybody talk about everybody. They secretly talk about everybody. Even the people who attack you because now they feel good about being wrong, they think they're better. They've been talked about too. They just don't know about it. They, really, everybody, just think about it. Everybody got a little whisper to tell you about somebody else. Have you ever thought about that? Everybody do it. Espe the only people that don't do it, that are truly walking in the light. You won't do it then, no matter what. No matter how your enemy attacks you or whatever, right? But in reality, you ain't got no reputation because it ain't you. There is no you. But your mind gives you a false image of you. And when you believe it, you feel like you got to protect that image. I got to protect my reputation. And that's the first thing they go after is your reputation because it's important to you. But if you can see, if you can see there is no you, so there is no such thing as a reputation. It's a lie. It's all made up. If there is no you, it's all ego and not you. And the ego is wicked and very deceptive. There is no light in the ego. There is no nothing in the ego, right? But it gives you a false sense of self. And if you really think about it, you ain't got no reputation. You just think you're protecting something that doesn't exist. And that's why that's the first thing your enemy does is to go after your false self of reputation, image of reputation. But you don't have a reputation because there is no you. I really want you to think about it. You're listening to lies. You're listening to the darkness of the imagination. And you're feeling a certain way and you're overreacting. When you realize that there is no you, and you just, all right, whatever. You're all in. And, oh, I like this. I just realized. When you realize that, were you about to say something? Did you have your hand? No. Oh, okay. When you realize that, that, wow, there is no me. It's a false ego image. And when you rise, ask God to give you light. Ask God to give you I have to do it. Give you light to see, right? You see, you're just life. And all the stuff that you worry about, all the stuff that you fight over, all the stuff that you carry, it's just there to destroy you. It's not even real. People walk across the road and you see people park, waiting for you to cross. They can tell you, oh, they're looking at you. They don't like your hairstyle. You could barely make it across the road. <laughs> because you bleed a lie. That's evil. God wants us to overcome the ego. There is no, uh, he breathed life into us and we became a living being. And he is life. He lives through us, in us, and he will guide us. But if you hold on to this false sense of self, you're not going to make it. Really. And the way that you, what I highly, highly, highly recommend, as Christ did in that movie, you have to let go and be all in. Yeah. You have to let go of everything and just let yourself live. And whatever happens, God got you. You have to be all in. You must, if you want to live this life the way it been set up and created for us to live, you must 100% surrender. You must surrender. You cannot put up any fight at all. Zero fight. You must surrender. Then God got you. He's going to let you see this about in you and about in others who are trying to hurt you. They have no love. They have no peace. They have the same spirit. That's why you can't hate them. You would not hate your enemy if you get to know yourself because you will see what's going on with others. Anytime anyone is trying to hurt you, it's because they can't see. Their hearts are evil and they cannot see because if they were able to see then they wouldn't try to hurt you because they understand the spirit that's happening, right? And then if you have totally surrendered and have no image of yourself, then you wouldn't be worried about your enemy because you know God got him. He'll take care. He'll fight your battle within and he'll fight your battle without. But you've got to rise in consciousness and practice being in conscious, being aware. 
So when thoughts come, you'll see them right away and you won't communicate with them about anything. Then you're going to notice your whole being will live in surrender, in total peace, no matter what happens, because you don't care. I remember the good old days when I was growing up, the old people used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but work will never hurt, harm me. If you have an ego, you're, you're more harmed by words than you are sticks and stones. Words can match you up if you have an ego. And that ego is not you. It's pure evil. How many people understand that? Oh, good. And when I say surrender, do you understand what I mean? You literally, like when someone says, oh, Amber. I'm going to use a nice term. (laughs) Amber ain't no good. And then you say, oh, but I thought she was a Christian. Yeah, she's a fake Christian. (laughs) I'm just throwing that word. And then Amber get the word back from one of her other friends. Oh, Amber, Mary Jo told me you're a fake Christian. You are hooping and hollering, and then, or, or meditating, or whatever, right? And then Amber going to react, oh, no. And Satan got her mind. And now Satan tell her, you got to protect yourself from that. You got you to gotta go around and warn everybody, that's not me. That's not me, right? Yes, <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is totally evil. It's totally crazy. And then, and so all her little church friends, she, she go around telling them, that's not me, I am real, right? And then all the little friends go, yeah, that's true. I know that's you. I know you're real. But then one friend don't call for a month. <laughs> and Amber wonder, why haven't that friend called? I haven't heard from that friend. And the minute she wondered that, Satan tell her, oh, she found out that you were fake. And Amber believe it, now she want to call the friend to hear the friend say, no, I don't think that. Because the moment the friend say, I don't think that, she feel better. I'm just using that example. But if the friend, if the friend says something, oh, yeah, I heard you, fake. Yeah, I believe it. It's over for Amber. Because she's overreacted to the ego. You must surrender. That's not you. And you will find that when you live in the light of God, because you have no ego feelings about anything, God would take care. You could work out all kinds of deals. Things happen for you. You could work out family issues and everything because you're not emotional about it. It doesn't matter. Because in the light, you've got to live in the light. You must live in the light. Otherwise, you will be destroyed. Because there are other evil people out there that are living in the ego, in their mind and stuff, they have no love. They're going to come after you so they can feel better about being wrong. It's like, it's like evil people going after evil people so they can feel better about being evil. People love don't do that. The children of God don't do that. The children of Satan die. But you must let go of the ego and surrender. And the way you know that you have surrendered Anybody ever surrender and just say, hey, this is it? You have? I hear the people, people bowing their heads. But y'all just said you have fear. How do you know when you surrender? I saw this here about a person that I asked you. Uh, the time that I felt when I surrendered completely? Yeah. Um, well, I just felt like I didn't have any opinions about anything anymore. Oh, like, okay. Like, yeah, I was going through really bad times. <laughs> like, I was like sleeping in the couch, and then I was just like, "Man, this is so." I'm so. To me, I was so deep in like the worst oh, okay. point of my life that I, there's nothing else I can do. Uh, like, I'm so down that there's like I cannot go more. To in my head, it yeah. was like I cannot go more down than this. So I might just live it uh, like all to God because there's nothing I can do. Right on. How do you know? You said yes. You have surrendered. And how do you let go? Just let go. Well, you know. <laughs> well, so but I if said, you let go, you wouldn't have fear. Right, right, right. So I, th- it's the mind that tells you, you know, the fear is there and everything, right? But, but to completely let go and say, okay, I, I have no control over this situation, so I got to let it go. And then you watch. It always turns out. It, yes. always, it always turns out God to be God would okay. take care of his children. So, yeah. He so. really, really will. 
You're absolutely right. So just like, okay, I can't do anything about it, so I'm going to let this go. And when you surrender, when you let go, right, you will, because you're growing, sometimes you will fall into a thought and you feel the pain of it, but you know that it's not you. So it doesn't cause you to overreact. It doesn't cause you to reflect. It doesn't cause you to do anything because now you can see that it's not you. Absolutely. And then eventually you become stronger. That's how you're made strong. When you know that you're weak, meaning that you know that there's nothing you can do about anything. When you know that you're not in charge of anything, there's nothing you can do, you see that you're weak. You can't make anything happen. You can't make it rain. You can't make whatever, right? When you see that on both either way and nothing, then you totally surrender. Just let go. And so when, when things come, you don't overreact to it. You're ready to let it just pass through you. And believe me, your enemies, when you don't react to them, they get angry and they will murder you if they could because they need a reaction. They really need a reaction. If you don't react, it brings out the evil in them that you've never seen. It brings the demon out. It's like for married couples, for example, or people who are living together and not married. If when the husband starts to overcome the wife and she can no longer control him because he's waking up and returning to the father, she'll say, oh, you don't love me. You don't used to care about my feelings, right? Uh, you don't care anymore. But now that you're overcoming it, she has no control. She's losing that control. And rather than her saying, um, you know what, I'm feeling the loss of you. My ego is hurt from it. She would make him be, pretend that it's you. And then if you don't give in to her saying, oh, she's like, you don't, you don't care about my feelings. You don't love me. My mama died and you didn't even cry. If you don't give anything into that, then she'll attack you. You this, you're cheating, you're gay, you that and this, right? And then she'll go around into the family and build an army against you. She'll convince the rest of the family member, not all of them because some people don't fall for it, but she'll convince the other members that you're the bad guy. She won't say, uh, she won't say, you know what? My husband stopped catering to me, and I can feel that loss, and now I feel empty. But she would say, he's he cheating on me. The, the mother would say, when you go in and apologize to your mother for resenting, which is the best thing in life you could do. I'm sorry for resenting you, right? She would say, oh, my son has turned on me. <laughs> and she would go around and tell her, Aunt Jenny, Aunt Leroy, <laughs> I mean, Uncle Leroy. <laughs> Ain't Uncle Leroy may have a dress on, but it's still Uncle Leroy. <laughs> Ain't Mary. And then the weirdest thing about that, they'll believe it, and they become like C CNN News. They'll say the same words, the same thing. They'll say the same words that you don't love your mama. You did this to your mama. You were mean to Have you ever noticed that? Like robots, unconscious robots, they'll repeat the same words. And if they're not addicted to drama, there are some egos that are so far gone, they live off drama, but they live off making you suffer. And they live off the lies in their head, too. You're absolutely right. But because, for me, because for me, if you just start saying something about, just like those people out there that we, we, we right. pass when, when, when we're. They didn't make me think anything negative of you. They right. made me think something negative of them or nice. whatever, or whatever. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. So, like, I mean, and that's what you should be <laughs> like in every aspect of life. Yeah, absolutely, man. But, you should see the truth. And and I mean, me and him. I mean, that that's what we're like. Like, we just don't care. Like, somebody start. Well, they were sleeping with this person. Like. We just not entertain. Neither one of us is yeah. going to entertain e any of that or whatever. Like, like, right. We just don't care or whatever. It's like none of our business. Jesus said last night in that movie. <laughs> 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 it was so deep. 
because it relates to what's still happening in the world. The world is the Old Testament. Christ created a new world inside of us. But if you really, really look at the world, it's the Old Testament. Sucking life out of folks and killing them. There's no love in it, right? Jesus said, the vices of the body, the physical, something like that, is nothing compared to the vices of the heart and of the soul. The soul is wicked. Isn't that deep? Who said that's deep? That is so deep. And when that, how come they made that other man look like a lunatic? Paul, uh, Moses, John. John the Baptist. They make him look crazy, right? <laughs> Does John the Baptist all look crazy to me or everybody? King Herod. King Herod made him look crazy? Yeah, blue eyes. I mean, he was like yelling and screaming, and, but he was in the wilderness doing that, right? But he, they made him look like he wasn't normal. Did that look like that to you, too? Have you ever seen it? I remember when I first saw the Bible story when I was young, and they, they showed that guy out in the wilderness yelling, but they made him look like he was possessed. Anybody ever notice that? It could be me. It sounds like y'all haven't seen that. But he said, <laughs> he said, salvation's of the heart. And once you are born of the heart, you're now with the Father, and he will clean the house up. Did you notice that? Have you ever noticed that guy look crazy? Um, in the movie, he looked crazy. Yeah. But also in the Bible, he's described as someone in the desert eating locusts and honey. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was fine. Locusts are wild, there. right? So I guess that's one way to depict them. Yeah. But it's all about the heart. But I want you to know, if you don't, you got to see that you are not your thoughts and your feelings. There's no peace in that. I want you to know that the depths of the mind is pure evil, and it's not your mind. God has given us a new mind. He will renew our mind, and in that is nothing but peace through all things. Because if you live in this world in fear, worried about your reputation, worried about what you're going to lose or not lose, they're going to kill you. They will destroy you. They'll put so much pressure on you so that they can live through, you know, take your life. You won't make it. Satan will kill you. You're not the ego. So from now this, from this point forward, when you get a thought and feel it, rise above it. Let it pass. Ask God to give you some light. Let it pass. And just welcome life. Have no opinion about life. Don't call it good or evil. Right or wrong, just live it without an opinion about anything. Do not, do not, do not have an opinion about yourself because there is no self. The ego wants you to think that that is a self so it can make you destroy yourself. And not you. There is no you. There is no you. You ain't got no reputation. <laughs> what are you trying to protect? And the more you try to protect it, they'll go after you even more so. Because they know you're worried about your reputation. You're worried about what other people are going to think. you worried about this and that, right? That's what they will go after. But if you know you, uh, it's a, an illusion to think that you have a reputation, you ain't got no reputation. If, you, if, the, if the world, all your family members and friends were earnest with you, they all think something negative about you right now. They just haven't told you. They told other people, but they haven't told you. And you think you're so wonderful, and they think wonderfully of you, and they don't. You'll be surprised. Everybody talk about everybody, except those who've been born again. Those who've been truly walking in the light, they go and forgive, and it's done. It's just done. It's over I'm sorry for resenting you. I'm sorry for offending you. That's it. But the world said, you know what? You got to destroy that person. That ain't enough. And Oprah said, tell us your vices. And you put your vices out in the world, and they come back and destroy you with, about that. And now you're afraid because you worry about what people think. 
Es all ego. Can y'all see that? Yeah. It's all ego. Real love is to be fair, to be, treat people the way you would like to be treated, to just live your life. But you got to, God would destroy that ego for you if you rise above it in his consciousness. So throughout the day, the night, be aware of those thoughts and let them pass. Don't hold on to them. And you'll see that you're not your ego. And yet it's in the body because it's a spirit. It's a spirit that made a home in you so it feel like you. Any disagreement with that? Uh, anybody don't understand clearly? Y'all all understand? <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, okay. It's just very interesting that you say that because before I came here, I, um, I, had, I had one of your pamphlets and I showed mom, hey mom, want to go to church, you know, Jesse's church. She was like, oh, who's that guy? I know his name. Uh, was it Pat Patterson? Peterson. She's like, oh, yeah, he's on like TBN sometimes. So she knows like, a little bit about you. One of the things that she told me was that, oh, I don't want you to drag my name in the mud or, or, ruin, or ruin, ruin my name or something like that. Because she has her own church, and she's the first lady. Oh, okay. And she's exper yeah. she experienced what it's like to be at a church and have people talk about her and stuff. She's like, so I don't want you to, like, talk bad about me and stuff like that. I was like, I'm not going to talk bad at you yeah. at all. And just it's just really, really interesting that you even said that. Like me, I'm and not the problem afraid. with that, that, just now that you finish that point, mm -hmm. when she said, I don't want you to drag my name through the mud, she think her name is important. Right, that's what I'm saying. Our name don't mean a thing. <laughs> right. It really don't. Jesse Peterson don't mean a thing name. It's just a name that they gave me to recognize who I am. But if you make your name important, drag my name. If it's not important to you, if you don't have an identity with it, how can they drag something through the mud that you don't? Okay, you have it. You got to overcome. You got to rise above the ego. For God has the light for us, a peaceful place. And in that light, no troubles, no worries, no doubt, no ego, no word about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat who your friends are, or anything. Because it takes away all the illusion that you have about yourself. It's an illusion. Your illusion about you is an illusion. It's not real. you just life. That's all you are. God made you life, and he just wants you to come back to life by being aware through consciousness and just live. So what? Drag my name. Okay, you can have that name. <laughs> I'm concerned about be with the father more than anything else. Okay. Yeah, and um, she was just saying that, and then um, I was just in my mind. I was just saying, nobody knows who you are. So, right. I, like, I'm talking about yeah. you. I'm mentioning her name is Ella. So it's like, but don't say her name. Oh my bad. <laughs> now we're gonna drag it through the mud. She ain't gonna see it. She doesn't, she doesn't even, she, she's not gonna you see just, it. You, she said. She's, yeah, she's in church. She's in church right now. She's she told you don't. Huh? You just you, you just came up. You just told us what she said not to say. Now you just said her name. You even said she's a first lady. And if you keep talking, you're gonna say the name of the church. Right, yeah. If I keep talking, yeah. No, but yeah, that's what she said. And um, I didn't even. At one point, yeah, I was caring about my reputation. It was just like, oh man, you know, I want to. When I'm around like conservative friends, I'm like, well, I want to, you know, I want to seem conservative, but I'm broke. I'm black. I don't know what to think. I don't yeah. know what to think. You can't be a conservative, broke, and black. Right. So I'm just like, oh, no. you gotta have. I don't think like liberals. So you gotta it's have like, one or the other. <laughs> yes, I don't think like a liberal. So it's like, yeah. well, I guess I'm just independent. So here's what I recommend too. From this day forward, this day forward, when, when those pains come, those thoughts come, and you find yourself in there, never, ever, ever, but never, never say, I feel this way. I feel that way. That's not you. You're naming it and claiming it. And that's what the, the darkness want you to do. When you name it, it become you. It feel like it's you, right? But it is doing that to you. 
That's not you doing that. I have fear. No, you don't, because there is no I. It has fear. Satan has fear because he has no love. He has nothing but evilness, hatred in, his, you know, in him. He has fear. And so when you say, I have fear, it'll make you believe that it's you with the fear. You won't see that that's the nature of Satan. Does that make sense? So don't say, I have fear, I have worry, I have doubt, I am this and I am that, because life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you say is what you become, because you believe what you say, and that's what you become. So if you keep identifying yourself with that ego and keep saying, I have this and I have that, that's what you're going to become. And then you're going to worry about all the things that you should care less about. It's not I, it's an it that made a home in you. It's not an I, it's an it. It's a spirit. That's why Jesus rebuked the spirits away from you so that because he knows and if you wake up, you're going to see that you are possessed. It just feels like it's you. But it's not you. So don't identify it with the I. It has fear. It has a representation false. It's not you. I saw a hand so Yes. So when you're saying, when you're saying Satan has fear, yes, are you saying that, like for example, the young lady who had fear talking in front of people or yeah. people who are afraid of un unknown things, that fear that we feel, that's how Satan feels. Yes. Wow. So that's how he feels. But because you identify with it as you, and, that, and so that fear come into you, it feel like it's you. But once you rise in consciousness in the light, for example, let's say that she say, say, oh, you can't get up and talk in front of people. Has she been aware enough and known that that wasn't her, it was just Satan talking to her? She would have got up and just had a ball, I have to set her down. Because she would not have had any fear. She would not, but she believed in lie. There is no, in reality, there is no such thing as shyness, insecurity, nervousness, or none of that stuff. It's all an illusion. It's all part of the ego. It's the nature of the ego. Me, me, me. It's all about me. Me, 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 right? Me have fear. Me have doubt. Me have, I'm shy. The real you, not shy. In the light, you're not shy. In the darkness, you're shy because that's the nature of Satan. So the fear you're feeling is not you. It's the nature of Satan. Just like when you come into the light, the no fear is the nature of God. And so you live in the light, you have no fear, you have no worry, you have no concern. You're, there's nothing shocking to you. You can hear news that can shock you, right? And you feel it, and it, it seems like it's real. I can't believe this news, the world coming apart, right? Because it shocked your ego. It shocked your ego, and it made it feel like it was you, and you reacted. And that's why it got you. You are not your ego. In the light, there is none of this mess. And the fear that you have is not your fear. It's Satan's fear. Because he is afraid. He has fear. And so he's living through you in fear, but it feels like it's you. In the real you, in the light, there is no fear. It's all ego. You need to watch your ego, which is not you. It's the ego. It's the identity that made a home in you. Then you can have life. And just relax and let life happen. Let it pass through you. Let it pass through you. And you will stop fighting with people. You will stop worrying about things. You will see it, that there is no past and no future. Another thing Jesus said last night, that something, God is not about time. He's eternal. He's not about today and tomorrow. He's not about yesterday. He, he's about here and right now. He's forever. There is no time in him. So likewise, when you live in the light, there is no time in you. But if you're your ego, you live by time, and time is mess, it's stressful. It'll destroy you. In the light, there is no time. So you got to rise above that ego. Stop identifying with it. 
That makes sense? Did you have your hand? Yes, ma'am. You know when you had Tom and Joe stand up? Yes. Um, even like doctor, that is a title, but even like a mom is a title, you know? Yeah. And like people are like, oh, she's amazing. And it's like, she's just a vessel. That's just right. Just like we are just a vessel. Mom is not amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but mom, with her ego state, which is not her, wants you to think she's amazing. She makes you wish of her in an amazing way. I hear people say, well, I can't talk about my mama. That's my mama, right? Mama ain't amazing. She's just a, a vessel. As she said, all of us, we ain't amazing. But the ego wants you to think you are. But you ain't amazing. Yes. But also, like a mom, I really do think, like, I'm not a mom, but I think that they struggle with, like, your child is just, like, obsessed with you. And then, like, the mom needs to handle that. Like, I don't know if that's, like, an ego thing, but... Like, my niece, she will do whatever her mother tells her. And I'm just like, to my sister, like, that's a problem, dude. Like, you need to calm that. Tra like, you're already going to traumatize her. Like, try to traumatize her less, you know? Yeah. But I'm thinking, But like, they can't do it as long as they're living in, as long as they believe that they're their ego. Right. They can't help it. They got to seek the kingdom of God in his right way. And God will draw, and then forgive. And God would draw you out of that false identity. I'm a living witness to that. I know what it's like to live in that ego pain. There have been times that I mentioned before, I could barely move because I thought it was me. It's not you. You don't have to identify with the pain. You don't have to stay in the pain. You just need to rise above it in the light of God. And you can ask God, hey, give me light. And he'll come and give it to you. Well, he'll just shine it down on you. Because he's in here and he's up there too. He loves us, so he will give it because he knows that, uh, it, he know that we, it's not us. We are not to blame for anything. Every decision you made in that fallen state came from darkness. And the decision will be made for you in the light, so you won't make decisions in the light because you can see that you're not in control of anything. you got to watch the not you and stop identifying with it. I'm so anxious, I'm so scared, I'm so this. That's not you. Stop saying, I am. And then whatever your, uh, ver uh, vow what do you call that thing? Vice. Vice is, that's not you either. It's that same uh, ego spirit that made a home in you when you were traumatized. But it's not you. So when you forgive, he take all that away. But as long as you identify with it, though, he can't take it away because you believe in the lie. That make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing that I'll say about your, uh, your fear, the one thing that came to my mind uh, that I keep thinking about when you said fear and uh, that you end up having, basically describing that you have better experiences without, without fear. Yes. Is... Uh, when I was in Hawaii, and uh, I had never in my life been skydiving, but, uh, and I had a little bit of fear at first, but I'm also a very stubborn person, so I was saying, I am gonna do this. Like, and so once I made up my mind that that's what I was gonna do, I, I got up in the airplane and I was just at peace. Like, I was just like, what, and people were like freaking out and everything, you know, like, and we get up to the top, <laughs> And I was like the first one that they led to because they saw that, you know, that I wasn't really freaking out. Yeah. And so I bent my knees and we just somersaulted out of the airport. But I just had the mindset <laughs> of if the parachute don't work or what, I'm just going to die. That's just what it is or whatever. Like, and, and I was at peace. And then, That's right, man. And it's the freest that I've ever felt in my life. Or you should be like that about all of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just be free. Yeah. Whatever. God's will be done, not my will. I remember Jesus didn't, he was, uh, seemed to be a little concerned when it was time to really face the trouble and die, whatever he had to do. And he was like, you know what? I'll paraphrase it. I really don't want to do this. <laughs> because God left him for a minute so he could feel all that stuff that we feel in the fallen state, right? And so Jesus was like, I really don't want to do this, Lord. 
But whatever I got to, whatever thy will is, let it be done. That's how you have to be with life. That God's will be done. You have to put up no, no, zero fight. You have to let it be. I'm telling you. And when you become that way, I don't care what nobody else thinks or says about it, you're going to have life. You have to put up no resistance. You're not God. And when you put up a resistance, you're playing God. And Satan is your daddy. He got you. Because when you think you're putting up resistance, that's not you. You're back in the darkness, and he's doing it. All, it's just ego. Can you see that ego in you? Anybody see their egos? It's not you. So just be aware of it, and God will bring you into the light, and you'll stop feeling all that pain and stuff that you've been going through, thinking that it's you. You're not, we are children of God. We are not supposed to be afraid. Christians are not supposed to be afraid. In him, none of that stuff, in the light, none of that stuff exists. It exists only in the darkness. That's why I want to warn you that you must forgive. Because if you don't forgive, that same spirit that you're believing in, it's in other people, and they're going to use it against you. Your fear, because you have not forgiven, they're going to make you angry. And the moment they make you angry, they control you. It's like you be controlled. And you need a phone call, one phone call to make you better. To make you, oh, Amber, I'm not thinking bad about you. <laughs> and then Sue Lee called later, Amber, I'm thinking negative of you. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't tell May May. She just called and said she didn't feel that way. <laughs> and, and Satan call you on the phone. He'll use his children to keep it going. The words from the outside, and the words from the inside will destroy you. You got to overcome. That's why once you're born of the Father, you overcome the words. You overcome words. You're not affected by the outside words, the noise, or the inside words. You live by the voice, voiceless voice. You live by rev, uh, revelation. Um, I saw a hand somewhere. Okay, let me take this young man first and then here. Okay. I was thinking also to the fear, uh, complaining too goes with that. I think absolutely because I was uh, I had like picked up a, a job, a uh, side job, and then um, and as it was going, I started complaining about it, and then I started feeling nasty, and I was like, I was like, why why am I complaining about this? I feel yes. like a little biatch, and then um, what? And then I stopped complaining about it. I, I didn't hear what I thought I heard, right? Huh? What the? Sorry. Take that mic away. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but then when I stopped and I said, oh, let me just, I just need to do it. Like, I'm tripping. So, yeah. I, be, I went and just grateful. did it and it came out a lot better than what I expected. It was weird in my brain. I was thinking, I was like, man, I don't know how this is going to come out. Or like, they, they gave me this bad footage and blah, blah, blah. Like, just complaining. And then, um, and I said, what am I doing? Let me just, I just need to do it. Like, I don't need to sit there and complain about it. So yeah. then I started I just did it, and it came out better than what I thought. But I just started thinking, oh, that's also nasty. The fear is nasty. The, the complaining is nasty. Absolutely. Like, it's just nasty. Don't complain about anything. No thing. Let life just happen. Live your life. Live life. You are life. You're not all this mess. That's not you. Stop identifying with the ego. Never, ever, once again, say, I am afraid. I'm going to lose my reputation. I'm going to do You ain't got no reputation. Whatever is important to you is what your enemy would come after. But then, in a way, that's a good thing because it allows you to see that, that is too, you're attached to that. And because of your overreaction to it, it allows you to see that you're attached to it. And that allows you to let it go because it's not real. Your enemy can help you, too. They can, if you become afraid, it makes you see what's so important to you. And God wants us to be in the world but not of it. There's nothing on this earth that we should be that important 
uh, uh, that should be that important to us. Nothing. Our children, our family members, our so-called friends, even ourselves. All right? Um, let me take, oh, I, right here at the end, over there. I just wanted to speak to the, or comment on the biblical question. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I, the biblical question. The old biblical question uh, last week. Are you convinced that there is no you? Yes. Yeah, so I thought, like, if the body's a shell for the lightness and or darkness that lives within us, right? The body's a shell to that. Our all thoughts are lies, so we don't have any control over that. And then the the ego is what we identify I, me, or you with. And the ego is clearly something that's not there. Yeah. So how could there be a me? I was like, no way. Like, just as simple as that, you know? That's so right. I just wanted to comment on it because it, it came to me and I was like, wow. Like, no, there is no me. There is no me. Literally just we're living like day to day. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. 31 years ago when I started Barn. And the first thing that God let me see was, of myself, I can do nothing. And of myself, I know nothing. And I stopped fighting myself. I stopped fighting with everything. Because once you see that you're not in control, right, you stop judging yourself. You stop trying to change yourself. You just live. I had no idea 31 years later I would have discovered so much. It's so amazing. Because I was a little baby in the beginning, you know, just growing and doing my thing, right? And I had no idea how much I would grow in the spirit. God is a spirit. We have to live in the spirit. I mean, and you will if you see that you're not your, you're not your ego. That thing in you that's carrying on like it is, deceiving you, that's not you. Stop identifying with it. Don't name and claim it. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to add just a lot of times I noticed in myself that all a situation will happen or present itself and all in my head I could see myself like deciding the outcome or how this is going to go. Yes. And I had to learn that it never goes the way you think it's going to go That's anyway. Right. And I noticed that a lot of people do that in the, the littlest things. When I train people, they have a perceived thought of how this, is, this thing is supposed to work, and they'll, they'll physically try to make it work. Their mind will tell them to do something, and they'll do it. And that's not the way, that's not the way things work that's right. at all, I've noticed. So just, I, I the guess ego the, is evil. It deceives you about all things. If you didn't live in the ego, you could work out all things. Go ahead, Doug. No, I was just saying that uh, the less, the, the, the more we can calm down and not go with our thought, that those first few thoughts and any, especially if it's something dangerous, you, you'll be much better. You'll come out of it most of the time unscathed. If you don't put up in a fight, you'll come out of it every time unscathed. But if you put up a little fight, you're going to come out wounded. You will come out wounded. Put up no fight. When you were saying about your reputation and your shyness, or you didn't mention shyness, don't ever identify with that anymore as you. That's the ego telling you that. That's that spirit, that identity that made a home in you. The real Amber is not shy. The real Amber can care less about a reputation. The real Amber is a daughter of God and, and just live in life and let that life go through her and just live in her life. So the next time you're around your friends or anyone and you start to feel a little shy or you worry, notice what you're thinking real fast, let it go, it'll disappear. Yeah, I I was oh, I'm sorry, hold on. I realized now that I was like identifying it with yeah. it and that was the biggest issue because even when I first heard the biblical question, I was like, what does he mean? There's no me. Like, I couldn't even, like, think of, I was, like, so confused by that. Yeah. Like, the ego's in me is so big that it didn't even let me come up with, like, an answer to that. I was like, what? Like, what does he mean? There's no me. <laughs> the ego is, we're possessed. 
You know, in the movie, they show people physically possessed, their body all messed up and stuff, right? But it's the same spirit, excuse me, it's the same spirit that was in them that's in us that we have to overcome. But we have identified with that spirit as though it's us. But if you identify with it, you're home free. In the light, none of that stuff exists. And watch how the world out there try to control you. Meaning, outside of you, it try to control you on the inside. But that same thing that you're thinking and feeling, it's in other people too. And they'll try, they don't know how to overcome it. They don't know what to do. So they try to get pain, give you pain so they can feel good about being wrong. Really. And the weird thing, the people that are doing this to you, if they only knew what people thought about them, yeah. <laughs> if they only knew, and the little whispers that goes on about them, yeah. if they only knew, <laughs> it's only in their own ego they think it ain't happening. Then they build an armor against you. Even in that armor, they don't like each other. They're disagreeing. They just want to go out to one soul for a minute and get some blood, right? But they don't like each other either. The ego has no love. You are not your ego, folks. Stop it. All right. Yes, ma'am. I can't believe we run out of time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let me take here for he waited for a long time. I forgot. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, speaking about the ego and um, like on Christmas, it was my dad's uh, 60th birthday and the family's there. My uncles are there. And um, I had a realization. I'm looking around. I'm thinking, wow, like the strong male presence, you know, when it's strong and the light, it, it reflects everywhere. Yes. Even if we're in a fallen state, or yeah. my cousins, or myself, whatever, my nephews. Uh, but it takes that strong male presence to even conserve like the traditions or conserve the the, the actual love of the family. Um, and just looking around, and I mean, overcomers, you know. And I had to see that to kind of help me overcome. If that example is not there, uh, it's, it, it's I don't know. If it's kind of impossible, but. I know the question you asked earlier, what we learned this year, uh, that basically the confirmation of how men need to give back to co love and common logic. Absolutely. To be the light for the, this crazy, insane world right now. Um, and so that's basically what we learned. And then the more that you, know, you preach Christianity, where I never see myself as a Christian, but it just com the word confirms how we should live the life. Absolutely. And uh, that's when everything kind of just comes together, which it's a process still, but uh, I mean, the message is 100%, it's deep. The message is real. I mean, I see it, I, I can see it. Uh, but yeah, I just. Right uh, on. That. The ego will make you afraid of losing something. And then when you look at every other, you never had any anyway. You, you ain't never had no friends. You never had any family members. You never had that. It's been fake. So when you lose something that you think you had, just know you never had it anyway. And one, that, one other thing about that. If you really, 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 Mama Mia, really? Tell them I said Mama Mia. No. <laughs> if you really like, hola, really? And I want you to stop denying what you see. You see your enemy along the highway of life. You see little people doing and saying those things that you can't trust. You really do. You see little glimpses of this person is not evil, you know. But Satan makes you, oh no, that's not again. Don't worry about it. Don't fall for that. When you see that your enemy, you better hit the road, Jack. Do not. You ever heard, hit the road, Jack? Don't you come back no more? Y'all heard that? Yeah. Oh, white people heard that song too? Yeah. What the? It's a funny song. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, stop denying seeing your enemy. Stop denying seeing your enemy. That's what Satan caused you to do. And he's building a trap against you. Your enemy is not going to change. You have to change. But if you deny that you see your enemy, then your enemy is building an armor against you, a war. Don't deny when you see that evil spirit. Don't judge. Don't resent. They cannot help it. 
but stop denying what you see. Isn't that amazing? So let me do this. Yes, ma'am. And then the last word. Uh, yeah, so... Did you say you wanted to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this is amazing. Everything you're saying today, it's like on point with a lot of things. But um, what I was going to say about the mother situation, yeah. since I'm pregnant, right? Um, I, and I begin realizing, I don't know if it's... Hor I don't think it's hormones. I think it's the, the idea, idealization that Absolutely. people in the community has built around women yes. when they're pregnant. They think they're like glass that they can't touch, they can barely breathe around them, right? And it has happened to me, right, that where I identify with that thought at the beginning, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and then I resent people because they're not treating me the right way, yeah. or they're not doing this, or they're not doing that. I had to get over that, about that ego, right? And I to myself, and it's like, who am I? Like, who, who's, who, who cares if you're like pregnant, you know? And then I just begin living my life, going to the gym, not being so like sensitive about, walking or doing normal things, just living in the moment and being like, okay, if I'm not feeling, Absolutely. if I'm feeling weird today, then I'm not going to do it. I'm not just going to like put myself or hear everybody telling me, oh, you shouldn't, you should, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. Right. And let my emotions overtake that because I don't know if it's hormones. I can't say a hundred percent because, you know, but I do truly believe it's just the lie you're you been influenced by the world and not realize it, right? Yeah. You hear the other pregnant ladies say, oh, what I got pregnant, I was throwing up. And I, I hear women say that about their, that monthly thing they do. Oh, what? you know that once a month the women go through the trip thing? Oh, they, they yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, they like, they heard over the years, they heard other women say, every month I just get, when this is happening, I'm just irritated, I can't handle it, I can't this. Oh, I'm just ticked off, right? I'm moody. So that implant an idea in your ego. And so when you start having your little monthly thing, the guys don't know what the monthly things are. The thing is that I won't tell them. <laughs> so when you have the monthly thing, you already been computer, computerized to act and think the same way. But if you didn't give in to the thoughts of it, your ego didn't matter because it's not you. Yours would be amazing. It will be like it never happened. It really would. All right? Um, so, absolutely. Yeah, one last, last no, uh, thing. One more thing? Yeah. Um, it's because, remember I was telling you about Christmas and about these things that, that, that they were like poking us, like poking me? Yes. Like these friends that were poking me? Yeah. That was one of the things they were poking about. Oh, like, yeah. is he not going to give you his chair when you're pregnant and stuff like that? And I never even thought that. I was like, <laughs> wait, what are you talking about? That's right. Like, <laughs> Do not have a conversation with that, though. No, 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 no. It's he, enough he, to see it him. Wasn't me. It was me. It was a person outside of myself. Oh, and okay. I wasn't even thinking that. That's right. And I saw it so clear, wow, this is the devil, but I didn't resent it. <laughs> I was just like, That's whatever. Right. Yeah, right, you know? But. Okay. Nice. Last word. Um, <clears throat> like the gentleman by the door said earlier about determining outcomes before they happen. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I've never touched electrical equipment in my life but I recently got a job offer for a low voltage job. And um, I ended up taking it just because it's just a new challenge and I don't know if it's gonna go successful or not. It's just another opportunity for me. It came up. That's right. I'm jumping in. And don't jump ahead. Faith is to, you're supposed to follow faith, not lead faith. Yeah. So take it one day at a time, one moment. God is about one moment at a time. Right now, right now, right now. And, and I guarantee you, man, and I can't guarantee you, but I'm telling you, if you live that way with that job, it's going to turn out to be more than what you could ever imagine. It would be amazing. But do not, and I don't care if the other employees complain or what they have to say and all that. Let them do what they do. You stay in the moment. You stay grateful. It'll turn out amazing for you. Yeah, and one last thing, like back, so I did have my mother's identity when I was younger. Yes. And so I called her to, to give her the, information, the news that I, I got the new job. And instead of saying, oh, congratulations, she was like, oh, well, what kind of job is that? Uh, I, I need to look it up for you. Um, did, a, did a white person refer you to this job? Uh, I was just like. like I, <laughs> I was just. Yeah. 
I would have given her the finger and hung up. But not, not the real finger. <laughs> That's, but that's, yeah, I just laughed. I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not worried about it. Right this. on, man. Yeah. Right on. Nice. One last thing about that. Let's say you want to start a business. And I encourage people to start businesses, right? Do not go around asking anyone what you think about it. I want to start a business. I want to start a newspaper job, a business, right? Don't ask them, what do you think about it? Because the moment you ask them what they think about it, you're taking on their fears and their doubts about it. Really. Do not do that anymore. If you want to start a business, you just start your business one day at a time, being guided one day at a time. That way you're not influenced by someone else's fears. That's the one thing God has done for me from day one. I started a janitorial service. I had no idea about it. I, and I remember telling some of my little sophisticated friends at the time that I was going to do it. They were like, no, that's not a sophisticated job. That's not this. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so I, start, I had no idea how to run a janitorial service, right? But it was an opportunity. So it didn't take much money. And I did it. And in seven years, I had seven full-time employees. It just unfolded. And likewise, when I started Barn, I knew no one. I, I started Barn without knowing anyone. Because it was given to me to start a barn. I saw, I was led to start a barn, right? And so we had, the, I, t I called up a friend of mine and told him, and he had a radio show. He said, okay, come on, we'll promote it. And I had never met the person before. And, uh, and so one thing led to another. And it's just been amazing what has happened in 31 years. I never would imagine that barn would be what it is today. And what God has put together, no man can destroy it. I didn't put it there. It's just coming through me. And likewise, don't be seeking people advice about stuff. You learn in the moment what you need to change or not change. But if you seek somebody else's advice, they're going to plant them in your head, and you're going to live by their advice and not God's guidance. And if, I don't even like using the word, if it doesn't work, it will work. And it will lead from one thing to another. So if you have an idea for a business, just go and do your business. Don't ask mama and your so-called best friend or anyone, I, I want to start a business. What do you think about this or that? You're looking on the outside for the answer. Never, ever, never, 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 but never, 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 ever, 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 but never reach outside for help. It's in you. you, you I have no idea what I'm doing at Barn or with the dentistry, sir. But it's been amazing the last 31 years. I, I had no idea. People said, don't you have a plan? Don't you have a 10-year plan? I didn't have no plan. I didn't even know how to come up with a plan. If I made myself try to come up with something, I wouldn't know how to do it. And I remember last thing, and I remember when I first started Barn, y'all think I speak bad now? <laughs> I couldn't even understand myself. <laughs> we used to play these, they used to record them on the tape things, these little t CD things or whatever you call them. And I would try to listen to it. I was like, oh, I can't take this. Wow. My ego was killing me. I sounded so bad. I couldn't even, I'm like, who in the world going to listen to me? <laughs> I can't even listen to me. But I didn't give up. I could not give up if I wanted to. It's my gift. It's my purpose. It's not a purpose I came up with. I could not help it. And then there was a time when I would have meetings with people, and Satan would tell me, oh, that was an awful meeting today. And I was like, Lord, have mercy. I ain't going back. I felt like digging a hole, jumping in it, and pulling the dirt over me. But the next Sunday would come, and I'll be right back because God is guiding me. And likewise, he has guided you, but you've got to know that you're not your ego. So if the world want to hurt you, all right, come on, you can have it, but I ain't giving it to you. Don't give it to threats and what people, you know, try to make you do. Like they're better than you, they're no better. Matter of fact, they're worse because they're trying to hurt you. They have no love. They're evil. Don't listen to evil. You gotta 
rise above, all right? In closing, stay with the prayer. I stay with the prayer. Pray without ceasing. Pray without, uh, uh, so that you can grow in prayer. You consciously become that way, all right? And no matter what happens in life, stay with the prayer. Pray without ceasing. And whatever people say or try to hurt you with, wish them well. Do not, do not, do not get angry. In your family, with your wives and husbands and friends, don't get angry. Anger is evil. It's the nature of Satan, and not your own. All right? Did this help a little bit? Surrender. It's okay. Don't, be not afraid. You're giving up death. You're not giving up life. Be willing to go down into the depths of hell and let that ego die and come back up with life, because you will. But if you hold on or if you worry, you're not going to get life. You're just going to get death. All right? That makes sense? Any questions about that? I hope that helped. And this year we have brought Christianity back. We have an amazing theme next Sunday. The Lord is willing and create the right first Sunday of the year. Um, this week, we're not open. Y'all know that, right? The office is closed. <laughs> We normally shut down from our Christmas day. Our stuff's so messed up. Sometimes we work on Christmas day, sometimes we don't. I forget. These people don't remember. But we work Friday all the way through this week, right? But we'll close Monday through next Friday. And then we come back on the 3rd and with the live shows, the office open and everything. But we're doing replays this week on the radio show. And... Um, uh, replays and whatever. Oh, and hopefully the Lord is willing to create no ride. When we come back, brand new show for you with, with the anchor baby. Hopefully he'll start on the third, Monday the third. Huh? After I'm not sure yet. He's working on it now, so we gonna have he gonna have all that in detail. He's working on it day and night to kind of figure out how we're gonna do it. But the way his plan, it might be kind of interesting. He doesn't wear that sparkling blouse for no reason. <laughs> you may see that sparkling blouse later. Y'all ever seen that shirt? That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like that in person, though. It, 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 if you were with him, he had a shirt on. It's just nothing. It's just a nice shirt. But on TV or something, when the lights are shining on it, the lights are flicking off, and <laughs> it looked like a different shirt. I don't want to you meet the shirt if you haven't met it. So, uh, so the office is closed all next week. We'll be back on the 3rd. We're doing replays on the radio show. We will have church on the first Sunday of the month. Also, I want to tell you that I am looking for a building, for a location for barn, right? And it just doesn't look like it's going to happen in California, unless something changed. Because even my realtor is warning me. He leaves it up to me, of course. He like, I wouldn't buy in California. The, the high taxes, the res regulations, if you get a bill and they don't want to let you do it, what you want to do to it. And now the, um, the Chinese thing, they want you to mask and all that. It looked like never going to let up with that. So I don't know exactly where I'm going to go or if I go somewhere, but Florida. California is not Florida. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I like, I, if I do move, you like Florida, too? I said, well, you don't have to worry about the taxes there. Yeah, that's right. And, and Governor DeSantis said there will be no restrictions in yeah. Florida. Well, since I've gone to Orlando a couple of times now, I got a feel of it. It's the kind of weather I would love to live in if I didn't live in California. Because I can't live in no cold weather. I'm sorry. But it does get cold in Florida. Two things that black people can't have is cold weather and swimming. So, but I'll keep you updated. And down there, like someone just said, the property is cheaper, so we could get, with the money that we raise, we could get a bigger and better building, to be honest with you. Yeah. I've talked to a couple of realtors already down there, so I will keep you informed, but that's what's going on. And I'll let you know what I know for sure, you will know, all right? So thank you for your support, and we'll read Super Chats and, and D-Lives in about a week or so, whenever we come back. Uh, 
And thank you for helping us. To, there's a $30,000 donation, and, and the donor will give up to $30,000. We're on our way to that, so I need your help to get there for that. And uh, stay with the silent prayer. Stay with, I'm telling you, I have to pray. And thank God I've heard other people that have fallen away from it, how, what happened to them. I've stayed with it, and it's been amazing. So thank you. Uh, Y'all have made Bond amazing, too. It did not happen by itself. I appreciate all of you and all of you out there as well. So we'll see what God has in store. 2022. Is it right? Yeah, I think so. It goes by so far. I don't know what year it is. <laughs> but thank you all. I do appreciate it. Happy New Year now coming up. Enjoy the rest of the Christmas. Be safe. And we'll talk. Stay with the prayer. Thank you all so much. And thank you for coming. Thank appreciate you. it. Amazing.